Hello everyone. Now that the school year is underway, it's time we delve into the world of E-Class. Let me start off by saying that if you haven't already, it might be really helpful for you to attend an E-Class training session at the ISC if you ever have the opportunity. I know a couple of you have and you're already on your way using E-Class and I really, really appreciate that. I don't want to scare you, but there's a whole lot of stuff you can do with E-Class and it'll take a fair amount of time for you to learn it and use it to its potential. So there's so much to learn, we're going to take it slow and one step at a time. If anyone knows me at all, I'm never long-winded and always get straight to the point. I understand that you as a classroom teacher are very busy and time is at a premium. So my plan is to teach you how to use E-Class is to do it in small chunks. So let's get ready for your first chunk. To begin, you may be asking yourself, why should I use E-Class? Well, if because it's a requirement isn't enough for you, then maybe it should help you to know that E-Class could very well save you a whole bunch of time by centralizing your plans and activities. Let's take a quick look at what you see when you log into E-Class. Of course you already know this because you're on E-Class right now on this lesson, but you log into the Go Portal, you click on the E-Class CNI link, and it originally takes you to this page. This page was designed by me. Uh, basically all the graphics and the colors and all the things that you see on this page this isn't what your page looks like right off the bat. Uh, it will take some time to learn how to do this part, but I'm going to get you to the basics first, and let me show you what your page would probably generally look like if you first went to it. Now, when I talk about the pages, at the top, there's a little drop-down arrow. As you can see, I have a whole bunch of pages here. All right, uh, At the top, you'll see Ms. Adams X, because it's alphabetical right now. Uh, if I were to click on her class right here, this is basically what her class looks like right now because I haven't taught her how to do anything on it yet, but it's kind of blank, okay? We're going to figure out how to put this stuff on here. So the generic stuff right off the bat are these things right here, content browser, bookmarks, news, calendar. You can change all this stuff, okay? These things are called widgets, and you're in control of every one of them. Also, at the top of the page, you have a nav bar, okay? It's a navigation bar. You can decide what you put in there, too. We'll get to that later in a lesson. Okay? All right. The important things are like the content browser. Let me bring you to the actual training page that we use. Okay? This is another page I designed. I kept it plain and simple so it wouldn't confuse people. But I decided I would put news at the top. On the left-hand side, I used the widget of my courses. In the middle, I put content browser. And let me tell you, the content browser is the most important one. This would be the one that all of your students, or even you, use to get to all your content and all your lessons. All right, and then I put over here bookmarks. If you ever find anything over here that is uh, within the content browser that you want to be able to find quickly, you can always bookmark it. It will end up showing up in this area here. But let's take a closer look at the page. At the top, you have My Home. If I click on My Home, it's going to bring me back to the original elementary, uh, Norcross Elementary School E-Class homepage. Right next to that, that is a drop-down. In the drop-down, you will see a bunch of different classes. Now, if you look at my view of it right now, you'll see that I have a few of them that are always going to be on top. All right. How did I do that? Well, that's by clicking over here on the push pin. By doing that, you're basically bookmarking those. So if I wanted, say, Miss Adams Act's second grade art to show up on top all the time, I click it, and now when you go home, and we'll drop down and look, it's always going to be at the top. So your favorite pages that you want or your favorite e-class pages that you want to show up and always be at the top so you don't have to load more courses or search for them, always use the little push pin to go ahead and put them at the top. All right. If you want to remove it, the push pin, you can remove the push pin. All right. So you'll see that you'll have different courses listed. Uh, just as a, a quick note, and this is one of the things that you need to remember, You'll have a class with your name. See, my name's Salo.K675Sandbox. This sandbox is for you to play in. No one will ever see your sandbox but you. Uh, if you go into your actual other classes and start changing things around, those are visible to your students and everybody that can get into your classes. Your sandbox is only visible by you. Okay. So if I were to click into my sandbox, it's going to take me here. Different background. I've messed around with things. Put some content browser stuff there. Okay. Now, so this is how you navigate to your different pages. Okay. At the top here, you will see a little message alert. 
If you have any messages, they'll pop up there. This one right here is update alerts. If you ever see it red, it's going to tell you certain pages that you're associated with have been updated. Now, just because you're associated with the page doesn't mean you can control a page. All right. Uh, this button right here, subscription alerts, saying what pages you've subscribed to. This drop down button can tell you, give you your profile, notifications, account settings, and the logout. Okay. And this button right here is admin tools, which you probably may not have. I'm not sure. I, I see different things than you. All right. So at the top of mine, I have all these options right here. The, let me explain to you first that, once again, that these are all called widgets. And these can all be rearranged and put in any order that you want to put them in. I'm going to get you that in a later lesson. This lesson is just to orientate you or orient you by what you are looking at on the page right now. So we are on the Norcross Elementary School training page. You'll see the news at the top. On the left-hand side, you'll see the courses. It would be the last 10 courses that you've accessed. Uh, then you have a content browser and a bookmarks. Now, to answer the question, why should you be using this? Well, the reason you should be using this is if you have lessons that you want to give, say, show a handout that you put under the document camera, or there's a PowerPoint also involved in that lesson, and then maybe there's a website that also goes on in that lesson. Any of those things can be all centralized into one point. To give you an example, under my content browser, let's take a look at, say, I wanted to teach you about Classworks. So under my content browser, I have a folder for Classworks. If I click it, it's going to show you different lessons that you can do. Okay, this one is about the universal screener. So I go into Classworks, I click on the universal screener, and it says click here to learn about the universal screener. Well, that's only one item there. I could have a whole bunch of li items listed here. I could have videos. I could have PowerPoints. I could have them all there in this correct amount of order. So in other words, rather than you using your document camera or you using a PowerPoint or switching things on the computer, if you set up your lessons in which all the items are located under your content browser, you can go through one of these things at a time. Uh, to give you even a better example, let's go to uh, the self-directed training course. At any time, if you go to self-directed training course, you can learn about all kinds of things on eClass ahead of time. Okay, so the first thing that comes up when you do self-directed training course, it tells you what it's all about. All right, if I go to the home button on this one, it's going to bring me to the home of the self-directed training course, and there's going to be, a, or excuse me, the content. If I click on content, it's going to bring me the content of the self-directed training course. See, there is a whole bunch of stuff. All right. Under the table of contents, there are 314 different lessons. All right, if you look right here, these are all the different things that they can train you about eClass. Like I said, there is a whole bunch of information. However, you don't have to go through this at all. I'm going to take it step by step and, and tell you how to do each one of these things, post information on there. So basically, why do you want to use eClass? It's going to make your teaching a whole lot easier. If you are organized, or if you're not organized, it will help you get organized. Let's say I wanted to do a lesson on the water cycle, and I had a PowerPoint that I wanted to show. I also had a website that I wanted to show. Uh, maybe I also had a worksheet I wanted to show. Uh, maybe I also had uh, an assignment for the students to complete. Uh, all those can be in one centralized spot. And what happens when you click on each of the items that you find in the content under a, a topic, it will bring you to a window. In that window, as you see right here, in that window, I can navigate forward and backwards, just like say you had a PowerPoint. Now, imagine that your lesson, your whole lesson, whether it is a PowerPoint or a Word document or a video, is all in the format of a PowerPoint, all ready for you. So if I want to go to the next thing in my lesson, I don't have to go to the previous window and go to the next one down. I can press the forward one. If I press the forward button, it's going to take me to the next topic. Maybe your next topic is an actual PowerPoint. If I were to press forward on the next one, it was an actual PowerPoint, the PowerPoint would be embedded. As you can see right here, this one is a video. If you have different videos that you have that you wanted to show your students, you can put those into your lesson. And all you're doing is navigating by one button. You can also make the screen a lot larger and enlarge the screen so all these things can pop out at once. And you see it's going through a video 
And your whole lesson can be in one spot all the time. You say, okay, well, it's going to take me a lot of time to put all my lessons in there. Once you get the hang of it, it really does not. If you had a document that you're going to give them anyway, or you already had a PowerPoint that you're going to use, or you already had a video or a link to a website, all those things can be uploaded in seconds. It does not take a long time to do. It's put in, and you can put them in the correct order that you wanted. And all you would have to do to go through your whole lesson is to navigate right through here. Also, this will allow your students, if they do have computers, to go home and access this information at home, whether they want to review it or whether you want to apply more work towards them. Yes, I know most of our students don't have access to computers at home, but it does give them the option to do so. So basically, why do you want to use eClass? It's going to make your job a whole lot easier. So basically, this is your whole first lesson in a nutshell, just a simple video. But here's what I need you to do to prove to me that you've actually watched this and actually watched it to the end. Here's the trick, okay? So what I need you to do now is to send me an email. And you don't have to type anything in the email at all. Just in the subject, type in the words, I watched the E-Class video and send it to me. That is it. When you send me that video, it's going to let me know that, or excuse me, when you send me that email, it's going to let me know that you've watched this video and taken care of it. Now, don't go tell other staff members, hey, you need to send them an email and put in the subject, I watched the E-Class video. Uh, I'm going to know anyway because I actually can keep track of who has watched this and who hasn't. So please be honest, and, and, and if you're not, I'm going to find out real quick. But just send me an email that says, I watch, in the subject, I watched the E-Class video. That's all you have to say. You don't even have to put anything in the, the actual body of it. When you do that, basically you're complete. And I will see you in the next lesson for next week. And we'll learn to do one more thing. And that's about it. Remember, we're taking it one step at a time. I'm not going to overwhelm you with a lot of information. Y'all have a great day. See you later.